take some ammo from the What we're do is sound funny, and we're taking on another insurgency today. And while we do that, one of the things that we're going to talk about is hey, whether or not the music funny. industry is actually dying. Because I, I, I was one of the guys that started Raw Dog as someone that really, really, really cares about independent music. Whatever this lady's philosophy on I feel evolution like, is, I feel I've like it's kind of hard to see either the light at the end of the tunnel for the situation that's going on right now. I got more skin in the game than that. Nixon Flying School has still not let me down. I've been playing a shitload of Fallout and I do not remember control them. But um, if you're an indie artist, it's easy to look at the game and you look at how money is distributed. And it's confusing and it's a little intimidating. But just like I know the video title says something like the music industry is dying, question mark. It's not. It's changing, it's evolving, it's adapting, and to a lot of major acts and to a lot of major players, that is incredibly intimidating. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, <coughs> well, you might be scared right now. Like, as an artist or just a fan of music in general, well, you might be nervous looking at acts and thinking, damn, this shit sucks. Or, how am I gonna make money? How am I gonna get this going for myself? How am I gonna do this? You know, it's a scary time. And if you're someone that's been making money off of this, if you've been using the traditional model, if you've been using the standard music model for your entire career, from me. and you just dropped yourself into the age of streaming, oh my god. I feel bad for you. I also feel bad for my aim there. Terrible. Again, I've been playing so much fucking Fallout, like... Aiming, controlling, doing all of that, it's it's difficult right now. I'll get used to it though. But yeah, it, 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 it's, it's an unpredictable time, is what we're trying to get at. It's a time period where a lot of money is changing pockets, a lot is being dispersed. And I got a text message that I had to check, it was from my doctor. A lot is being dispersed financially throughout the system right now, and it's 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 an uncertain time. And so, um, one of the big things I wanted to talk about is why it's like that, and Lola, why it's I something to embrace rather than be Good. afraid of. Now find Sons. She will have the key. I feel Hang like I got company. You okay? It's. Just do it's thing. scary. Don't it's a new time. Me. We got we got so much to learn. Even though we've had social media around for it feels like forever, it's still in its infancy. We're still learning from it. We're still developing things. So it's it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to predict where everything's going, and I find that to be more encouraging than not. And I'll tell you why. So I'm, I'm gonna start with a little bit of a history lesson and I apologize for that, I'm gonna keep it real short. Basically, way back in the day, the, like, the, the length of songs was very heavily restricted by, you know, the actual medium that you could print them on. A vinyl could only hold so much. An LP could only hold so much. You know, like, it was very much an imperfect system, and it was still growing and developing. So that's one really, really, really vital thing to keep in mind, right? Like, right now, artists have more control now over music and content development and creation. So, ju ju just remember, just remember, right? So, now that we can kind of experiment with things, the attention span that people have for music is changing. It's not necessarily, it's not necessarily that full-time duration. 
It's not necessarily, like, 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 you're not necessarily putting out albums anymore. You're not necessarily trying to string together multiple mixtapes. You're not trying to do a million things at once. You could just drop a single that you're feeling. You know? And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. It, it, it sucks for storytelling to an extent. It, it, it does suck for the traditional game to an extent. But at the same time, evolve from that. At the it's same time, team. it's just different than what people are used to, and what people are used to still exists. So I'm not saying that attention span being shorter is a good thing. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that it's a new form of content that has become incredibly pre prevalent in the past few years that we need to be absolutely aware of. Like, it, it's a big it fucking deal. You know? So, wow, this, this has been happening since stuff like Vine, like short-term video content that like, started becoming a thing. Like, our, our attention spans have kind of changed, and especially the streaming where artists have been able to control the length of their songs, do whatever the fuck they want with their music. It's, it, it's a different time. Lola, you okay? It is so different than what most are used to. Uh, inside the music industry and I guess outside of the industry just because of how perception has played a role. Let me reset the clip. I've got the weapon and I so, need a ride home too. Of course. Meet you at the pickup point soon as I can. Basically oh, where have I heard that before? Like I was saying, we do have we do have a period of time where overall the attention span kind of shifted and people people were going back to making normal projects and things like that normal what i mean by normal is like traditional um that definition is ever changing <laughs> but yeah so you have people making traditional projects through the 2000s even till now like you that's not a thing that has ever changed at any point and that's important to note. Good. There's some but, water. On the whole, with TikTok and different mediums like that, it's just the average attention span is not what it used to be. It isn't. It just isn't. It just isn't. And we make a different kind of art to help cater to that. And that's contrary to popular belief. I actually do think that's okay. So. Back to like the whole vinyl concept. This really helped set those standards I'm talking about. Just because of the input, I need to put on my Running Man loadout. I didn't even do that before leaving. I'm a, fuck, I'm a goofball. Um. Damn. I lost my chance. Right. With the vinyls, you're looking. At, you're looking at a piece of media that really set a standard, and we still got dudes collecting vinyls today. I fucking collect vinyls. My boys who aren't musicians collect vinyls. I'm not everyone, but like it's a fairly decent sized community, you know. And so it it really not only set the standard, it it paved the way in so many different regards. Time for some water. I need a close. Um, and that really has become entrenched in our perception of music. It really has become a huge part of how we view songs and the artistic creation process. So, a lot of people see what's happening in music. They see that, they see that shorter kinds of content are like is being produced or, or are being produced short types of content you know like you see you, you see that and a lot of people chop this up at like to the industry dying the industry falling apart that this the other whatever i still don't have the key for that I'll get the um but yeah like you kind of just you see people saying that the industry is dying or that art isn't what it used to be or that everything is just lower quality or that it just straight up sounds like shit and it's i i don't think that that's really fair to say considering that given the internet social media and 
everything that it offers, people are doing their best to get noticed and come up. They're not trying to have to Lola, I'm at the entrance. use these platforms entirely. Women, some people I'm are, and I think that some it. people use the short form content to be lazy. But on the whole, a lot of people are just looking for different ways to adapt to it. You know? And so, like, I feel like it's very important to keep in mind and to stay mindful of the fact that so many different artists would prefer to be doing things a different way. And that this is just a means to an end in some situations. I feel like, I feel like with streaming and other mechanisms of releasing music, things are just generally changing as well. I think that people are being empowered to hear a shorter narrative in their music. Cool this thing down with that water. And I, again, I think it's a good thing. I really do. So, like I said, overall, releasing stuff on vinyl was a standard that length for C like stuck around for CD. It stuck around through the mixtape era, and people still like follow Lola, it to this day. Born, I for a cab and that's all fun and dandy. But the thing is, like doing physical releases like red that is so cost restricting. It is Running very fun, expensive. Here, it requires it requires a lot of funds that people don't have, and that requires deals with shady labels. And you know, like. Listen, if you're so confident this will do well, give us 80% because, you know, we, we got a line in our pockets while we're supporting you. Like, it paves the way for that kind of conversation with labels, and it's just, it's seedy because people can't, people can't afford that. And so that's kind of how streaming became so prevalent. And with streaming, came that exploration of content length. With that exploration no, of content length, you have a bunch of people Shut thinking, how can I fit as much content into one session as possible? How can I increase session time? How can I enable the most people? And that really, really comes down to short form content. You only have so much time in one day to watch them. So by enabling someone, someone to have your attention for, say, just a minute of time, just a minute of time. You've done your job by entertaining a person, and That's technically, nice. like, now you're not taking a whole, a whole time out, like, a whole couple hours out of your day, so to be able to create some content. You're not taking a very extended period of time to do that. And so, this made streaming, this made Vine, this made TikTok, this made shorter forms of content more appealing. There's so many different people. And it's 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 better that way because more people can create and less people are in super dodgy dodgy contracts with billion dollar record labels. You know, yeah, I mean people aren't getting fucked over to the same extent as they used to be. And that's a good thing. Yes, there's less money to be distributed for right now. We're seeing that. We're seeing we're seeing independent artists struggling while artists at the top are relative they're phased by this but taylor swift just sold a record amount of like concert tickets she 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 fucking crashed so ticket am masters. i safe to drink you that know? water again like, like people are still thriving but that's not going to continue because of all the different factors that are enabling more people to create i'm gonna reset my record set and so with this influx of people you know, mixed with Web 2.0 kind of coming into its own and kind of is establishing itself in the way that it has, so many more people have been able to obtain exposure. Which, again, it is great. It is, it is terrible for labels and for individuals who have relied on their star power in the past to generate word of mouth sales. I believe it was uh, last week or two weeks ago, Quentin Tarantino said that it's not Chris Evans who you're going to see when you see a Captain America movie. You're going to see Captain America. It doesn't really matter who fucking plays him. That kind of discredits what I'm getting at in the sense that 
there's just more people doing it now. Your movie star roles, your rock star roles, like like your your artist roles, these are now being filled by more people than ever. Simply because we have a medium to share on. You know, like I'm kind of sick. I apologize for the sniffles, but uh like I make all my videos with my phone, computer, and Xbox. It's a lot of money in hardware, but I bought all of those things and then years down the line was like, I wanna make videos off of these things, you know? And so people are being enabled in more ways than ever and with more creation and exposure, like through streaming, you're less likely, there's less money, you know? You're less likely to be making a shitload of money. There's less cash flow. There's less money going around for a time as the market grows. Lola, as your service. And so that's kind of why there's a strain on indie artists right now. Let me, uh, let me get to doing some of these checkpoints and stuff. We already know how it is. We gotta get through all this. We gotta, we, we gotta do the love request. We gotta do the insurgency. We gotta, we, we, we gotta do it all while also talking about something. That's why I got my little notey note page. Yeah, dig. <laughs> but yeah, with less cash flow, this gets really scary for independent artists and especially artists that are brand new to a label that have been given what is essentially a loan and told recover your losses, you keep whatever profit. You know, like, these are people that need to pay a shitload of money back to labels. It's fucking scary for you right now. I get that. <laughs> Just because of that cash flow restriction. Labels are also experiencing this because similar to the 2008 market crash, where the housing market just fell the fuck apart. Oh jeez, my game is frozen. Um, where the market kind of just fell the fuck apart, you know? It's <coughs> like it's a result of people not paying back their loans. And when you're the label, I I have so like if you're the label, not the person defaulting on the loan, it's really hard for me to find sympathy for you there. So that kind of that that one restriction alone, that one place of financial pressure Checkpoint. is creating a oh, huge amount of discourse that's causing concern within the community. And that's very understandable, but I think that also comes with understanding that know. the streaming and indie market is a growing one. Um, as more people realize how to get indie artists paid and as more indie artists realize how to get paid, I think we're gonna see that change. Okay. Better watch myself here. But yeah, with, with everything going on, like, hey, at here, first, yes. label artists were able to survive, they were able to take those off, uh, they were able to take those loans and really create a boom for themselves. And so, the 2000s, the 2010s, even even the really late 2010s to early like 2020s, like not really 2021, but pre-COVID, you would see people flexing on Instagram. You would see materialism and not really the worship of materials, but the commoditization of rap really peaked around then because there was so much money going around, and now there's not. There simply is not. <laughs> Did I not lay down? What? Ridiculous. But you're... As the saturation picks up, and as the industry shifted post-COVID, that's where we're seeing this tightening that I'm talking about, this financial tightening. And that's where things start to get really sketchy, because there's a little bit of an implosion. Like... 
it's it's not every day you see an industry fall on its ass as badly as entertainment did during COVID. It, it was impossible for people to perform. It was difficult to get projects together. In general, people weren't going to go see artistic projects. Why, in, in, in that situation, would you? Sort of deal. You know? <laughs> Like, why in God's name? We're just gonna ignore this dude, because, like, if, if we take his quest, he gets blown up by a tank. I'm not gonna be responsible for a civilian death. Um. But, yeah, like, there really was a huge point of change during COVID, and the following that needs to be acknowledged through all this, because this is where that giant influx of money as people are figuring out that this industry can make a shitload of dollars for people and corporations that influx money of money meets a barrier and that barrier causes a massive stall in production which means that you're going to see less like we were seeing less music we were seeing less quality sounds for a time reset we were seeing less quality sounds we were, we were seeing some really bad deals we were seeing like we were just seeing some fuck shit, you know? Like, there really was a strange point for music, and it, 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 it was very uncertain because it felt like no one was agreeing and it felt like there wasn't much direction. And that's scary. That's what happens when overfunding catches up to you. Now, Towards COVID is also where established artists started to struggle because now that those newer artists could not pay back them all these, how the fuck are those established artists going to get paid entirely? You know, I'm not, I'm not talking Elton John, all right? Elton John can make his fucking money off of streaming. Elton fucking John. Not even, a, not even a huge fan of his music. It's just, it's just, you know, respect where respect's fucking due, right? <laughs> Like, come on. So, a lot of older established groups aren't transitioning to this well, and because a lot of older people and a lot of older demographics that follow this group, like, this is all they're seeing, and they're a majority of the population, it's gonna get dramatized, you know? Like, ain't no doubt that everyone's gonna be freaking the fuck out and going, why is this happening? And a large part of that isn't, isn't, it's not really the age group's fault, it's, it, it, it's humanity's fault, bro. Like, we just don't, we don't really look for things outside of our own perspective. And so, as, as their dialogue grew, it eventually hit kids. And kids started to notice things. And they started to notice really shitty production from different labels. They started noticing not great artists. And it's scary. You know? It's it's not like existentially terrifying. You're not you're, you're not losing sleep over it. But if you're someone that appreciates art, you're like, come on, when's the next good thing actually gonna drop? Like what what am I gonna actually enjoy what I love listening to? <laughs> You know, and I don't know. That part, that 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 part was a little bit of a tangent. This my bad. I'm gonna go back in with one of the really hard facts about the overall music situation right now that is holding back the market and is actively contributing to the music industry faltering, and that is simply the fact that streaming doesn't pay enough money. So for right now, you're looking at countless, just countless financial restrictions. You're seeing countless people struggling. You're seeing demographics really flounder all throughout the community. That's convenient. You're seeing demographics flounder all throughout the community, whether they're, whether they're established artists or indie artists. And you're seeing people without money trying to freely promote their products. And when one of the biggest outlets have, like TikTok has a very high Something reward for there. using their platform, not spending money on it, just simply using their platform. 
a lot of people are going to create art to work with that. That furthers the idea that art's getting shorter, it's getting lazier, it's dying. Like, the industry is dying, like all of that, but in reality, no. No, it's not. Like, we're really looking at a huge shift in demographics. We're, look, we're looking at massive changes inside of the industry. And again, discourse is not going to be kind to those conversations, and it's not going to be fun to talk about it. Damn, I should have hit his head. Damn, I should have hit him, period. Damn, I should have aimed. Hindsight's 2020, dude. <laughs> But yeah, so while we're while, while I'm talking about streaming, it's not happening. Anymore. Before I go off on another fucking tangent, you know, while we're talking about streaming, not happening. Anymore, at the same time, you are having a wealth of serious, serious, serious ethical issues within the industry being exposed. You, you, people are broadly finding out about problems within contracts. Predator, uh, predatory scheduling, things like that. You, you, people are finding the nooks and crannies of the music industry that has harmed a lot of people, or that have harmed a lot of people, you know? And so, with this also being exposed, it looks like so fucking much for the music industry to overcome. Not just that, not just that, if you do have the money, if you're one of those people that do have the money, you can generate all the attention you want through ads, and that kind of perpetuates shitty artists getting getting attention, unfortunately. You know? And that's also not a great look. When, when you have your most talented wordsmiths not really trying, you know? Like, like, like every, every bar concludes with the same word. Like, that's not a great, that's not a great look for the game. That's not a great look for the community. And when that's all that's being pushed through ads, it not only blocks people out of the market, it makes the market unattractive for everyone. It makes working like within it more difficult. So kind of like going off that as well, this involves a learning curve, you know? It takes time to learn how to navigate ads. It takes time to learn learn how to navigate actually completing all of these things and becoming a part of the community, finding out what's needed, finding out how you create content for different mediums, how you find out to tell your story, how to create a how to create an original piece of art within the confines of what we're what needs to be pushed. You know? And that's not again. You just have so many different bad looks for the industry. You have so many different negative factors hitting all at once. It's like this in other industries where there are so many different negative, negative things happening all at once. And it's primarily because we're moving to a world where more people have access to make money. More people see better for themselves than they have in the past. More people are able to generate wealth thanks to Web 2.0, the internet, like the prospect of augmented reality, things like that. You know, like, <coughs> things are truly changing in a lot of different ways across the board. And that creates pressure. That creates pressure to act, it creates pressure to analyze things. Everyone wants to be the first to break a story. Everyone wants to understand what's going on. They all want to capitalize on it. They all want to do well. But in reality, every single, every, every single thing that I've seen shows that this world is really, really, really trending towards accessibility. All right, I need to get an F and D base. Where it at though? Ah, up there. Okay, that works for me. So yeah, at a time of uncertainty, it's just, it, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, especially when it's inhibiting artist growth, 
especially when it's inhibiting the ability to develop yourself because you're trying to develop to the environment. And like I said, a lot of the things that I'm going through right now are concerns about the music industry itself. You know, like, it's really not a perfect situation. And for a lot of people there, it's, it's so hard to find these silver linings. So I just want to kind of lay out everything that I've been seeing that's kind of been concerning me and that I've asked other people that's been concerning them. You dig? So, the time, bro, what the fuck did that write? Right, okay. <laughs> the time needed to act, like this is just another thing that's holding people back, holding the industry back, right? And why people say that it's dying. The time needed to succeed in music is immense. And while creation is more accessible than ever, socioeconomic conditions do prevent people from having the time needed to create. Therefore, where are they gonna go? They're gonna go to short form content though. They're gonna go to TikTok. They're, like they, these people were drawn to Vine and they created YouTube channels. They created full on careers for themselves out of it. You know, like when you don't have time to fully create, you use what's available to you as a tool to create and you just move from there as best as possible. And so with all these limitations and difficulties to kind of enter the game, like, it's yeah, generally bleak serious. and upsetting. Like, for so many different people, they're like, I don't know where to begin. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I, I like, you, you need X, Y, and Z to get... Fuck up now. You need, you need just like a shitload of resources and all of it is really intimidating. If you're just getting into this. And... Part of why I'm making the video is to say I get that and I respect that, but also, don't worry. Just get it. Record your first song, go to a studio. And let me explain why, right? Because it is still absolutely worth it to be making music and to be trying to make it inside of the game. You just need to have actual expectations. Like, you need to define your expectations, you need to taper them as you do, unfortunately. Because the game, the industry isn't dying. The music industry is absolutely not fucking dying. It's evolving, it's changing, it's becoming something else. It's not a place for, for superstardom anymore. It's a place to make a living. And that's amazing. That's genuinely something to behold, I think. Like, when you really consider the fact that people are now able to turn making minute-long videos into full-time jobs. And that a lot of this art is just generally fun. Like, it, it, it's good, it's silly, it's fun to watch. It's light-hearted in a lot of occasions, and it can also help change opinions rapidly. It can help shape this place super cool. So fucking fast. Like when you consider all those things, like why, why is that bad? Why does that mean that the industry is dying? Why does that mean that, that people are being lazy? Especially in a situation where no, a lot of this shit is really economic circumstances preventing people from creating. Creation is expensive, you know? Like, if they're able to do it at home, Bro, that's, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, I don't see why that particularly is a problem. And, you know, I, I, I think that what it really is, is, like I said, we're not, we're not gonna be seeing star power anymore. But we're gonna be seeing more stars. We're gonna be seeing more people making money. We're gonna see more people building a career for themselves. We're gonna see more household names inside of art than ever. Again, it's a very good thing. I need to take care of this the slow way.
So initially, like people, people get discouraged because they're not making any money. But in reality, if you keep releasing and you keep putting in that work, you keep dropping and you let the algorithms that be like work for you and you give it time, eventually <laughs> you're gonna start generating a small passive income. And that's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to develop. You're like the amount that you make per month is gonna continue to get larger. First of all, it's just a good fucking feeling. And over time, as more people learn that to support independent artists, they gotta be streaming or buying projects consistently. You're gonna start seeing your fan base become ravenous for your music if it's something that you're good at, if it's something that you're supposed to be doing, you know? Like it's becoming a much more holistic place to grow despite the fact that there is that shorter like attention span. There's that shorter, there, there's that shorter mindset where people don't want to spend an hour and a half listening to a very fleshed out album. You know, they, 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 they want to hear some fire parts of a song real quick. <laughs> like they want to hear that shit immediately. They don't want to wait. They want content creators who can do this shit weekly for them. They want people who can deliver. And we're getting there. We're really seeing a situation where we're getting there. <coughs> Damn, my throat fucking hurts. Mm. I'll run it in. But yeah, resources are like promotional, creation, like networking. All resources are becoming more available. You know, this you can do distribution wherever. You can do it for free. You could you could buy a plan. Yeah, unlimited drops wherever. No one's gonna stop you as long as you're not committing a crime, right? It's more accessible. That causes you more confusion. Individuals can be learning skills so quick and they expand with like their artistic journey and they can expand upon the artistic offerings, you know? Like it's not just you're a rapper or you're a singer, it's you also make beats, you also mix and master, you do this, you do that, what do you do? You do that, right, right, right. Like, how can I support you? Like, how can you support me? How can we work together to, like, you know, make some fucking money? Like that. <laughs> like, with this accessibility is coming more opportunity. And with that, it's going to create an unstable time for the market. That's what we're seeing right now. That's part of, like, those financial constraints that I've been talking about that I feel are concerning and important to bring up. But I feel like the potential for the future is equally important to bring up, you know, like just because we are living in a time where this shit is becoming a viable for a part time job for some people. So, yeah, people are really able to level themselves up. They're able to develop new skills. They're able to meet new people. They're able to build a better network. They're able to do so much. And I personally don't use TikTok. I don't, I don't, you, I don't really like doing short form content. Most of my gaming videos are over an hour. They're 45 minutes to an hour every single time. You know, like I personally, I don't like short form content, but I recognize it's not what's killing the industry. It is so far from what's killing the industry. And to say that Special forces. the the entire music industry and that the entertainment industry is dying as a result of things like TikTok, uh, lowered attention span, new music just not even fitting their tastes. Like, I, I, I get it. I get it, man. I, I don't like a lot of new music that's It just means it's not to your taste. Like, like, people attribute not liking something with the entire industry falling apart and that'll discourage people from either joining or really taking part in different activities within it enjoying album drops 
meeting different people, going to meet their favorite artists, participating in the community, things like that. It creates such a negative perception, and we're experiencing the fallout from that right now. And it's unfortunate, but it's not coming. And so I think that's really important. We're, we're in a situation where I really, really, really do not stand by the fact that the music industry is dying as much as it's evolving. And I think it's more commercialism and commercial industry that's falling apart. I think that when you actually look, when you actually go through and look at the amount of money being made in music, the amount of artists who are making a living, the amount of people who are able to feel comfortable while making art and doing well for themselves, the amount of people there has drastically increased. You're looking at less amounts being made, but it's being distributed to even more people, enabling more people to chase their dreams. They're able to go out there and drop a project without the support of a label and, well, that may be bad in some cases because not everyone's a great artist. Well, it's just a fact. It's still important that people get the opportunity to express those things. And so the music industry isn't dying, commercial music is. If nothing else, I feel like that's the biggest takeaway. You know, really, really, really do not be discouraged by what you're seeing because ultimately, this is a market readjustment. We, we live in incredibly uncertain economic times. We live in incredibly uncertain economic times, right? But overall, we're experiencing market shifts and balances. We're seeing stabilizations, we're seeing destabilizations. We're seeing an entire world change in front of us as a result of technology. As opposed to being scared of that, and as opposed to saying, this industry is dead. This industry is in the ground. This industry is so far fucking gone, it's in hospice on life support, and the orderlies are stealing its money. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, and it's, accurate. Like, it's genuinely not fair. Because now more than ever, while you may not be seeing people with the star power of Eminem, 50 Cent, Jay-Z within rap, while you're not seeing people like the Beatles, while you're not seeing e even Justin Bieber types as much anymore, while, while you're not seeing the boy bands, like all of that, I can guarantee shit's getting better. <laughs> you just need to put in some extra effort to go and really find those artists find the people you fuck with find like really branch out because that's that's what's happening it's not just artists who are being able or being enabled to cre create it's the consumer being able to curate an experience for themselves you're not supposed to go on to spotify and listen to the same fucking songs over and over again they have the song suggestion algorithm for a reason you know, art is about exploration. It's about defining your own interests. If you want to contribute in that community, it's about sharing your interests in your own way and sharing your vision in your own way. And with more people being able to do that than ever, it's really important that we overlook what's happening to the loudest voices in the game because those aren't the majority. They really aren't. And it causes the rest of dialogue to shift with it. Everything that I listed at the start of the video, a lot of those are preconceived notions that don't have a whole lot of basis in reality. Like these are things that 10, 15 minutes of research could just dispel. Like if you know where to look sort of deal. Like we're literally, we're in a very changing society and it's just, I can't believe my fucking ears when I hear people saying music's dead. Let's cop all this shit from Lola and we'll wrap things up.
God damn it. Ah! Do I simply get money for liberating outposts? Because I'd like to purchase everything. Like... Damn. Damn. This hurts. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, this hurts. Five dollars? Bro. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna end it. I'm just gonna wrap things up. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. But yeah, if nothing else, please keep in mind, right? Music industry is far from dead. It's growing every day. More people are getting involved. More people are being enabled. You can, you can navigate through the confusion. You can navigate through the hardships of dealing with advertisements, with dealing with bullshit companies and all of that. You can navigate these things better now. Doesn't mean shit's dying. It means it's changing and it's changing in favor of the majority of people in it, not the people who have collectively consolidated wealth within three, four companies. So with all that being said, peace out, y'all. I hope you have a great week. I love you. Happy Thanksgiving. Doses.